Hey guys, it's your favorite reliability and test guy here with another fun-filled action-packed video on reliability tests and validation topics. Today's video is on Mill Standard 18H Method 514.8 Annex B on manufacturing and maintenance. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you would like to learn more about vibration and shock testing, check out my awesome book, Master in Vibration and Shock Testing, available at Barnes & Noble in the link below. All right, let's get going. In this video, we will cover an introduction to Annex B, application of vibration exposure criteria, categories of vibration exposure in manufacturing and maintenance, and optimizing tests and strategies for durability. Mill Standard H&H outlines rigorous environmental testing for military equipment. But Annex B focuses primarily on vibration exposure from maintenance, transportation, and maintenance activities. So why is it important to consider manufacturing, maintenance, and transportation? Well, these can contribute to the overall fatigue, material damage, and performance degradation of a system during its lifetime. This focus is critically important because equipment often experiences substantial yet overlooked vibration stresses during production processes, transportation within manufacturing facilities, handling, storage, or during routine maintenance activities. Such exposures, though typically shorter in duration compared to operational conditions, can introduce cumulative fatigue damage, induce material weakening or microfractures, and accelerate wear and tear. Without adequately addressing these early life vibration exposures, latent defects can emerge, significantly reduce in reliability, shorten in service life, and increase in the likelihood of premature failure during critical operation missions. In order to create a robust vibration test criteria, Mill Standard H&H recommends using real world or field data, and so do I, whenever possible. If direct measurements are not available, engineers can reference existing databases or refer to standardized life cycle models to develop a test profile. Annex B classifies vibration exposure into three separate categories. The first is maintenance and manufacturing processes. The next is handling and transportation. And the last one is environmental stress screening or ESS. Let's go ahead and look at each one. Every manufactured component undergoes some level of vibration during processing. However, significant variations in vibration exposure can exist between different production lots. This is why test specimens should be selected from lots experiencing the highest vibration stress. The transport modes include truck transport, which is typically random vibration at low frequencies between 1 and 200 Hz. Rail transport, which has periodic and transient impacts. Air transport, which includes broad, high-frequency random vibrations. Sea transport, which is low-frequency prolonged oscillations. Parts and material experience vibration exposure not just in manufacturing, but also during handling and transportation. These vibrations can differ significantly depending on the mode of transport. For commercial transport, Annex C provides guidance, while for non-standard transport, direct measurements are required. Environmental stress screening, or ESS, is a crucial phase in validation and quality processes for mechanical and electronic systems. It consists of subjecting components to vibration cycles to uncover failures early, ensure product reliability, and assess manufacturing consistency. ESS applies multiple vibration cycles before production acceptance. This includes ESS is implemented before production acceptance to ensure defective or weak components are identified before deployment. The test involves applying repeated vibration cycles to expose workmanship and material defects that could lead to failures in the field. Common ESS vibration methods include random vibration tests, which simulate operational conditions. Sign sweep tests, which identify resonances, weaknesses, and workmanship issues. Shock tests, which assesses structural durability under impact conditions. It is best to incorporate ESS as a standard qualification test for high reliability products, particularly for aerospace, automotive, and military applications. 
The next point is exposure contributes significantly to vibratory fatigue. Vibratory fatigue occurs when components experience repeated mechanical stresses, leading to microcrack formation and eventual structural failure. ESS accelerates vibratory fatigue by subjecting materials to high-intensity vibrations over multiple cycles. The impact of vibratory fatigue is influenced by amplitude of vibration, higher accelerations increase stress levels, frequency content, certain frequencies align with component resonances amplifying damage potential, and cycle count. More cycles leads to greater cumulative fatigue. For best practice, engineers must balance ESS vibration intensity to detect early failures without inducing premature wear that would not otherwise occur in normal operation. The next point is maximum allowable exposures must be considered in design calculations. Each component has a defined fatigue life, and excessive ESS exposure can consume significant portion of that life before actual deployment. Fatigue life analysis should be performed to determine 1. Acceptable vibration test levels without exceeding the material's endurance limit. 2. Number of cycles a component can withstand before structural integrity is compromised. And 3. Safety factors to ensure ESS exposure does not induce failures in the field. For best practice, engineers must analyze stress-strain behavior, material endurance limits, and actual mission profiles to set appropriate ESS exposure limits. Understanding these vibration environments are critical for engineers to develop robust test criteria. When designing for durability, include worst case scenarios from manufacturing and maintenance and shipping and also environmental stress screening or ESS. As part of your preconditioning prior to final environmental testing, evaluate and include significant manufacturing and maintenance vibrations. Manufacturing and maintenance processes introduce various levels of vibration stress that must be accounted for in durability assessments. Manufacturing vibrations arise from machining, welding, stamping, robotic assembly, and conveyor systems. Maintenance vibrations occur due to repairs, handling, reinstallation, and transportation between maintenance facilities. Neglect in these phases can lead to premature fatigue failure, unexpected performance degradation, or material failure in the field. It is best practice to conduct real-world vibration measurements during manufacturing and maintenance to define realistic test exposure levels. It is imperative to use worst-case transport conditions for vibration test selection. Equipment and components experience different vibration profiles during transport, depending on the modes used. Worst case scenario selection ensures that test profiles include the most severe vibration conditions a product may encounter. Real world vibration data collection and simulated transport profiles enhance the accuracy of vibration test criteria. It is best practice to apply worst case transport conditions in vibration test protocols to validate equipment survivability in extreme transit conditions. You must ensure ESS exposure limits are factored into fatigue analysis. Environmental stress screening is used to expose latent defects in materials, subassemblies, and completed systems before deployment. ESS involves controlled vibration levels applied repeatedly to detect potential failures before field operation. While effective excessive ESS exposure can contribute to fatigue damage, accelerating failure rates in long-term operation. Engineers must assess whether the applied ESS vibration levels exceed safe fatigue life margins and adjust accordingly. It is best practice to define maximum allowable ESS exposure limits to prevent premature component failure while still identifying weak points early. Another important thing to consider is to use preconditioning as part of environmental testing protocols. Preconditioning simulates initial wear and degradation before final qualification testing, ensuring realistic evaluation of performance. This process involves subjecting equipment to a combination of vibration stress, simulating field vibrations, temperature variations, high and low temperature cycling, and humidity exposure assessing environmental resilience. 
Skipping preconditioning can result in misleading durability assessments, as real-world exposure may introduce failure mechanisms not captured in controlled test conditions. It is best practice to integrate preconditioning protocols in environmental testing to better predict field performance and identify potential weak points. It is also best practice to define the maximum allowable ESS exposure limits to prevent premature component failure while still identify weak points, whether this be for vibration, temperature, or humidity exposures. By leveraging MIL standard 18H NXB, engineers can take a proactive approach to identifying, measuring, and mitigating vibration stressors before they become failure points. From manufacturing and maintenance to shipping and handling and environmental stress screening, Every phase introduces unique vibration challenges that must be accounted for using real-world data, existing databases, and standardized life cycle models. Test planners can ensure that material is not just compliant, but built for long-term durability and mission success. The key takeaways and conclusions for this video are to account for vibration exposure early in design phase. Use real-world data whenever possible and supplement with standardized models. Evaluate manufacturing, handling, and ESS exposure to optimize testing. And precondition material using worst-case vibration scenarios to improve reliability. Ultimately, incorporate a MIL standard 18H vibration exposure criteria into the testing and validation process ensures that critical systems can withstand the harsh realities of their intended environments. Whether you're a test engineer, a test planner, or part of a development team, understanding these guidelines is critical for designing and testing systems that last. MIL standard 18H provides a framework, but real-world measurements are the key to accurate vibration exposure replication. By integrating manufacturing, transportation, and ESS data into your test criteria, you can ensure material durability and performance in operational environments. And that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope your day is full of good vibrations.